see that Lysel goal last night? I did. It was a P. What a shot. Yeah, it was. Short side. Uh, so uh, a couple of Bruins thoughts here quickly. Uh, we mentioned that because he was a first-round pick in 2021. It would really help the roster if he emerged as a guy. They have only really five viable forwards for their top six. They desperately need a, a second-line right wing. He is a right shot, could play right wing, whether it's Lysel, uh, the Georgie Merkulov kid uh, had really nice assists last night. Uh, that's someone they could really use to emerge into that spot. So the focus is on those guys, and uh, they had been pretty much invisible, according to the guys down there during training camp or the first preseason game. Montgomery kind of called him out. He called out Lysel before the game, said he's going to have to do more to make the team. And then he went up and had a nice night, finished, and then apparently he won. I, I guess he wasn't doing much before the goal, but after the goal, he sort of found found his game and and uh, had himself a night. So, like, that's just a development that they need. Did you watch it, Mass? No, no, I just watched the highlights of it. Yeah, see, I watched some of this. I missed it, the first one. Apparently he was garbage in that first preseason game, was Lysel. Right. Yeah. So he got called up by the coach, had a better night the second night. I don't know, we'll see. That it's, could be an important guy for the team. But you said in the email chain that he floats. So in the highlights that I saw, he doesn't look like the most. I mean, again, on the goal he scored, he's just kind of standing there. He there's gets a, there's a power play and they didn't cover. Him. I know, but he and he, he wasn't. You know, it's not like he was flying around the ice. And then he was on the ice for one of the other goals scored by a guy I've never heard of, whose name was like Tufty or something. And the same thing, he doesn't look like he like, he doesn't exactly zip around. You know what I mean? He doesn't yeah. look like a high energy player. And I thought I remember Ty Anderson saying that he kind of you know, floats or doesn't get back and, you know, based. so maybe I get that stuck in my head. He looks like he kind of half-asses it. So I hope that that's not who he is. I'm just going by the little bits that I've seen. Apparently that's who he is. But either way, so that's just, again, there's a little second preseason game, a little snapshot there. Bruins need uh, someone to emerge uh, onto that second line, and it would be a good result for them if it could be Lysel or Merkulov. Did you have another thought, Murray? Yeah, I thought you know, Corpusala wasn't really tested. You know, I think it was seven shots, seven or eight shots he faced, but he looked composed, so you know this could potentially speak to what you're saying. They'll be just okay because goalie Bob can coach him up, right? Well, so there's another one. Who knows? It was his first, Corpusala's first uh, appearance, but he did shot, did uh, save all seven shots he saw. So, like, that's a big one, too, they, and it's a big one just because I think it's going to make the Swayman thing interesting. If they get off to a good start and Corpus Allo's representative, that gives the Bruins leverage. If they fall apart to open up the year and they can't keep the puck out of the net, that gives Swayman leverage. And so I'm here for it. I'm here for that sort of leverage game in which way that it goes. That could be a great story. So uh, I've told you by the end of the year, you're going to think Corpus Allo's okay. That's my prediction. Uh, but I've always said by the end of the year. But given their track record and how goalie Bob's coached him up, you're probably not going to be wrong there. I don't know. I, so by the end of the year, that's what I think. Right out of the shoot, is Corpusalo going to be good? I think they need him to be, or they need the they need their team defense something. What whatever, however they get it done, they got to keep the puck out of the net and put up wins, and that gives them leverage over Swayman. He's a big dude, Corpusalo. Yeah. I mean, All these guys are now. He looks gigantic and you know pads and everything. He's a, he's a big dude, like which makes me sort of wonder how can you be that big and let that many pucks get by you? It's amazing that these guys, when these uh, that some of these guys suck as bad as they do. You're giant and your pads are massive. Just s sit there, just lean, just like, get on your knees and just sit there. Beanbag, and they still uh, can't stop the puck. But so the, the three guys to keep an eye on: Lysel, Merkulov, and of course Corpusalo. But speaking of Swayman. Ryan Whitney on the Spit and Chicklets podcast responded to Don Sweeney from the other day. Uh, Jimmy, give me the full cut. Here's Ryan Whitney responding. This entire negotiation was fumbled from the beginning. That is my opinion on it. It was fumbled from the beginning when you decided to trade Allmark before you had a deal with Swayman. You decided to not take Swayman to arbitration. That could have locked him up for one or two years. You could have punted this down the road, but none of that happened, and all of the leverage was put into Jeremy Swayman's camp. And this guy, I do not think personally he's going to give in. I don't know where this goes from here, but his agent also represented William Nylander, and when did he hold out till biz? December. Right around December. So now I think Don Sweeney's taking out his frustration on really fumble f 
putting this entire negotiation on me a little bit and indirectly on you because he didn't even want to <laughs> say my name. No, no, that, we're buddies. That's fine. Yeah, you guys are buddies. You guys are buddies. I just don't understand not talking that long to a camp. And I stand by what I was told, right? Like, he's going to call me a liar. I think he's fudging a little bit the truth. Now, who knows, right? I guess maybe the truth somewhere in the middle. But I knew the offer, and it was a low ball slap in the face offer. So I don't see this kid giving in. I really don't. I think 8 uh, times uh, 8.2, uh, 8, uh, 8 times 8 gets the deal done. But it seems like that is not on the table on the Bruins end. So much is riding on the start for Corpus Allo. Like, if Corpus Allo has a tough first 10 games... Well, they got the, a tough schedule in the, October. The, the noise of that fan base is going to get so ridiculous that they're going to have to cave in and probably give Swayman what he wants. From the Bruins fans I've talked to and seen, they are like, sign Swayman. You trade it all, Mark. You haven't signed Swayman. We signed Zadorov. We signed Lindholm. We're all dialed in to have a really good team again, and you don't have your goalie signed. And not only do you not have him signed, you gave him an offer that is a slap in the face. And that's why I do wonder, along with the arbitration where you said, maybe they don't really have the trust in him for the future. Well, now, how would you change your opinion on that with the offer they gave? Like, what signs have they showed that they really believe in him? So, uh... Couple things here, Maz. Well, first of all, do you have a reaction? Well, I would say he's clearly uh, completely in line with Swayman and the Swayman camp. No, like, like you know, they, I mean, I say completely, like to the point of what signs have they shown that they believe in him? Oh, would you stop with that? Like, they want the player. Okay, they want the player. They're negotiating is what they're doing. He's never been a full-time goalie, and that's going to be used against him. So to suggest that, like, they're, you know, slapping him in the face and they don't want him is a little much. Okay, that's all. It's a little much. Now, that said, I think there is the possibility it's going to come right to, I said this to you earlier, it's going to come down on November 30th, the day before December, December 1st. And then Swayman's going to have to take whatever's there. If the Bruins can wait, Until December 1st, if they can genuinely do that, they'll win. I think it'd be, I think if they give in at any point here, it is such a bad look. I, I, I I would, uh, I, it's to me, I'm going to rip the hell out of them because it it, it means one of two things. Well, I mean, it means you suck and now you've got to, now you have to give in because you mismanage the situation and it's hurting your team. And now you've got to, you know, come back crawling to him and give him eight times eight, which is not what he's worth, which is I would not give him. And I think that would just be a horrible look. Uh, At this point, I think the Bruins just have to stick to their guns. And if it pisses Swayman off, it pisses Swayman off. And he's going to have to come in. He's going to have to report on November 30th and play for whatever they decide or whatever, whatever that number is. And we'll see how he reacts then. You, you, you can play angry. You can be all pissed off. Tim Thomas was wanted off the team. He was done with the team in 2011 and went on to win the, win the cup. That's how he was wired. We'll see how Swayman's wired. I don't think it's the same way. But like I almost feel like the long-term prospects of him and the team are hopeless. Like Why would you want to sign this guy after all this? Why do you want him for eight years? He, he at, at, at some point, he's not going to want to be here. He doesn't want to be here. I don't care what he says. It's like... So like I think it's getting it's getting close to being untenable. I mean, I look they're on a bad track. I would just say again, if the, if you're the Bruins, I, I, I mean, I'm with you. Don't move, don't move. Sit right there because what's he going to do? Sit out the year? There's no way he's sitting out the season. If if, if they move and cave in, if they're just screaming, "We screwed this up. We were wrong. He's worth yeah, this yeah. money," right? If if you sit there and say, we're not giving you that contract, you're not worth it, and then he has to come in at November 30th and sign for one year and three million, they can sit there and say, well, we were offering you more, but we, you know, we we weren't going to budge off our number because we were right. If they cave, they're admitting they were wrong the whole time. They can't cave. No, they can't. And I don't think he will either, Maz. You say he he, he has to on December 1st, Murray. Uh, he comes off as a bit of a stubborn prick. If oh, I, I could see him, like you know, being that dug in and saying, "Nope, no, I'm not showing up." Okay, but but if he doesn't show up, he doesn't get credit for the year. I know, and and he's no closer to free agency. So uh, the leverage game, how the Bruins get, you know, how they start, and are they keeping the puck out of the net? Whitney says the the first ten games is really tough. You guys ready? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm in. Yeah, win loss, opening night. At the Panthers as they raise the championship banner. Loss. Loss. Win. Win. You lose. Two to one. That That is a letdown night if there ever was one. You lose. Two to one. Murray and I win. 
<laughs> That's right. Two nights later, home Montreal. Win. win. <laughs> Two nights later, home LA, 1 o'clock. Win. Loss. That's a win. LA's a, it's a 10 a.m. game for the Kings. It's a it, it, LA's a playoff team, or they were last year. Yeah, but LA's pretty good. That's a that that's a one o'clock West Coast East Coast October one. Is that it better be like a Saturday or something? Uh, October one. That's like some. This is that's October. I'm sorry, October twelve. October oh. twelve. Saturday afternoon matinee. Win. win. That's a win. Murray, you lose. We got it two and one. Uh, host the Panthers. Uh, October 14th at 1 o'clock. Columbus Day, 1 o'clock matinee. Fraud shift for Felger and Oh, like, yeah, win. we love those win. <laughs> Let's That's a that win all win. around. Hold on, let me put that in the calendar. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. 1 o'clock Bruins, Panthers. Daddy, I'm going to do the same thing. Daddy, that? Got, a, Daddy got a comp day. We, we four <laughs> found a fraud shift. Yeah. yeah, good. So I'm sorry. So I'm going to give them a loss on that one because they, they would have beaten the Panthers on opening night. Then they travel out west two nights later at Colorado. Loss. loss, loss. Then they go to Utah. Win on the nineteenth. <laughs> that's win, win. What the hell are they calling that team? I think it's the hockey club. Oh, that's right. It's just Utah, right? Oh, here. that's pathetic. Uh, three nights later at Nashville. Win, win. win. Yeah. They played uh, I'm having one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven. So I think we're five and two. Uh, next night, uh, or two nights later, hosting the Stars. Loss. loss. Sub, uh, five and three. Next night, uh, hosting Toronto October 26th. Win. Six and three. And then hosting the Flyers on October 29th. Win. Win. Seven and three. They'll be all right. Yeah, they'll, they'll be all right. They'll That's be not fine. that. Like, what is Whitney talking about? Uh, he's got it in his head. He's because Whitney's, you know, yeah, he, and, uh, Ryan's a great guy. Love you, mean it. But he's like a Swayman guy. The he's they a side Swayman, with the players. He's a Swayman guy. So all of a sudden, it's like, Lord, Lord, look at that, dude. Look at that start. Look at that schedule. They got they 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 got two with the Panthers. They'll split. Canadians suck. LA's good, but it's a one o'clock Saturday matinee. That's generally a win. Utah, Utah, Nashville, who sucked last year, right? If, yeah, I, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think or, they or, did. Or were they, they good? The playoffs? I can't remember. Borderline. It's Nashville. Uh, either way, the, the schedule is not that uh, big of a deal. If Danny and Quincy were talking. Nashville was a playoff team last year. I think they were the they were the eight seed there. Oh yeah, they gave a good run to the Canucks. I think that game, that series went seven. They were the eighth team there in the in the West. Danny Quincy would say to Ryan uh, Whitney that he has a certain part of his body <laughs> on a certain, <laughs> right, anyway, a certain part of Swayman's body. Th there's your Bruins man. If you like that clip, check out more videos from Felger and Maz here. For more Bruins analysis and opinion, hit this playlist. And for all the latest from the Sports Hub, download the app at 985thesportshub.com.